Okay, ready? Oh, I am ready, yes. Uh, hello, I'm Elizabeth Thompson from Noble, and I'm gonna be talking about batches, baskets, buckets, book bags, and just a one little element of uh, carousels. Um, but it didn't make it on the title because it didn't start with B. Um, and this is not everything you can do with those things by any means. And we're only going to be talking about um, items and bib records, not buckets of patrons, even though that's a thing. Uh, but let's see. So here's what we're going to be talking about. Groups, containers of either item records or bibliographic records. And the first one is a little bit of a cheat, a, a batch, but people don't always think of it that way. It's not a container. It's a, I'm bringing together a group of items because I'm gonna do something with them. And then there is no container. Um, item buckets is a container when you wanna save that batch for some reason. And for bibliographic records, we have the basket in the catalog, which brings things together temporarily. Um, we have record buckets, which bring things together in a way that you can save them for a longer period of time, as long as you want. Um, we have book bags, really the, the my lists uh, that patrons have. So that's the patron equivalent of a, of a bucket basically used for different purposes. And then we have carousels which is something that you can do with the bucket. And I'm really only gonna show you one thing, but it's the confusing thing. Um, so I put it in here. Okay, so an item batch is a group of items that's brought together on the item status screen um, called uh, search for items by barcode on the search menu. Uh, items can be scanned so that you have a pile of items and you scan the barcodes of them. Um, or they can be uploaded from a file. Uh, there actually is another method too. Um, and they can come from a report. There are all kinds of, of ways to, to get those items. Uh, item batches are useful for um, different types of projects. So they're great for batch updates, for updating the inventory, marking things missing, deleting batches of things, all kinds of special projects. But the problem with them is Item batches are not persistent. They're like doing the dishes. So the dishes are over here and you wash them and then they end up over there. And that's, you know, end of story. Dirty, clean, you know, and, and, uh, and done. Um, so they're great for projects that are like that. Somebody brings you a pile of things that they wanna move into a different section of the children's collection and, and you need to make the change or, or, or whatever. They're not so good for any kind of project where you uh, might be interrupted. Because if you close that tab, because, oh, I'll look that up for you right now, the, the, you know, that goes away, which depending on how many items you scanned may or may not be a tragedy, but it still is a, an inconvenience. So when for situations where, oh, I, these, these are interesting screens. Um, this is the batch for item status, and you may not be able to read it, but there are two ways to get things there. Um, uh, in the box on the left under that yellow banner, um, that's where you would be just scanning your barcodes. And that's probably the most common method for things like, oh, I, I pulled this ba batch of items, I, I want you to do something with them, or I wanna do something with them. Um, there's also that, that little uh, note that I have popped up there. Um, you, can you can also plop in there um, barcodes separated by commas. So it'll take that as, as uh, a way. And if you already have that, that is a useful thing. And then to the right of that, um, you can upload a file from your computer. So if you have a file of barcodes because somebody scan these barcodes into a text editor while they were wandering around doing something in the library, or if these came from a report and you just wanna 
copy this column of, of barcodes and save it as a text file and, and do that or whatever, then that's, that's uh, an easy way. So, you know, never scan a bunch of barcodes if someone else has already kind of done that one way or another. When you have your batch, you can select all items and then take action. So you can select them all and delete them all or, or select them all and update the inventory. The complete list of actions, it may be one of the longest action lists um, in, the, in the system. Um, if, if there's anything that you can do to one item, you can probably do it to a batch of item and you've got lot items and you've got lots of options here. Um, I very much like the headers there that, that separate the things you can mark, like marking the item as damaged and, and the things you can add and editing call numbers or items or call numbers and items. You know, they've really got all the choices there um, for doing things. Uh, I, in addition to, to selecting all, which is sometimes what you're trying to do, um, you can select individual items and you can do that by just reading through the titles and saying like, oh yes, this one, this third one, this seventh one uh, meets my criteria. So I'm gonna deal with those in some particular way. Uh, but you can also sort and select. The column headings are sortable, uh, sort, sort things. <laughs> Um, so in, in, in a way, you can get like a mini batch within a batch. Um, in this case, I sorted these by um, call numbers. Do we call numbers? Because I wanted to do something particular with the 600s that I didn't want to do with the others. But I could just as easily, depending on the nature of my project, have sorted by the item status because I don't want to, I don't want to do batch check in this way, or so I only want the ones that are, are uh, in a in a different um, status. So it's just an easy way to kind of deal with this group and then that group and then that group um, within the same within the same batch. And this is true, of course, of all grids, um, but it's very useful here. Um, you can configure the grid, um, choose exactly what columns you want to have displaying, fiddle around a little bit with the width of those columns. You can set a sort order for those columns. So I want this sorted first by shelving location, second by uh, call number prefix, then by call number or whatever order makes sense for the kind of project that you're doing. Now, the reason... Um, the reason for sort for uh, setting the grid and and uh, you know taking that into consideration, for one thing, depending on the nature of your project, there may be an order and columns that you really want to look at. For example, if you're doing something involving editing items, you probably don't need to see the due date or any of that kind of stuff because it's not about that. Um, you know, for other projects, you want to see other things and have things sorted in a particular way. Um, something to know is that you have the option to download the full CSV um, from that, that's from the uh, actions on this. And downloading the full CSV gives you a very nice spreadsheet. And the more time you've put into choosing what columns you want and the way you want it sorted, um, the the better your your spreadsheet would, will look and the more information that you will have. So for some projects, um, getting a report in the spreadsheet of these things that you're moving or weeding or whatever you you're doing um, is um, is is part of your 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 end goal. But sometimes a bucket is just not enough. It's not enough for a project where you are likely to be interrupted. So you can't sit there and do your whole project at once because again, you, as soon as you start closing tabs and things, you're gonna lose, lose that. Um, it's, it's not great for a project that um, takes place over time. So it's not that somebody brought you 
this group of items because they want them changed and that's just a one-off thing. If the children's room is engaged as they so often are in pulling out the cars and trucks books and the alphabet books and stuff from picture books or hire a new one, moving them all back into, if, they, if there's like an ongoing kind of thing, um, then, then it helps to get them all in a bucket and, and uh, work with them that way. If there's any part of your project that involves undoing, so you change things that are going on summer reading, maybe you change the location, you may change the um, fields that affect the, uh, the way something circulates. Um, if you did that as a, as, a, as a batch, then at the end you realize like, oh, now I have to like scan all of these again to, you know, get to, to undo those kinds of things. And sometimes, knowing that you're going to have to undo things may make you create a few different uh, buckets for depending on the, so these are DVDs and they're going back to this section and these are books and they're going back to that section. Um, item buckets. So item buckets are a container full of items that stay on the system potentially forever, unless your system has other, other, policies or, or whatever um, associated with your um, user account. And they can be looked at at any time. Uh, so one of the ways that you can get um, items into a bucket is to get them into a batch. So you scan them, you use the upload the file or whatever. And one of the hundreds of actions that's there is to move them to an item bucket. Uh, there are other ways to get that, but that's probably um, the easiest way. And in this case, um, I'm only moving these biographies because I'm not doing, I'm doing a biography bucket and I'll deal with all those other items in some other way um, separately. When you uh, choose the option to move to an item bas a bucket, it gives you two options. Are you trying to put things in a new bucket or are you trying to add these to an existing bucket? So you have a drop down that'll show you all your buckets and an, and an option to create a new bucket. You can of course go directly to the item buckets um, interface at any time. It's on the portal page, it's in the um, search or, uh, circulation uh, cataloging menu, it's, uh, it's all over the place. This is the item bucket interface. And one thing you will not see here is those nice tools to upload a file of records or paste in the um, barcodes separated by, by commas. Um, so that's a reason for not necessarily coming here to, to set up your, your bucket, although you can if you're only going to just, um, just scan the, the uh, barcodes anyway. Um, the bucket menu gives me a few bucket management options. So it gives me the option to uh, create a new bucket, to open a shared bucket, um, to delete a bucket or edit a bucket. Delete or edit a bucket makes no sense here because I haven't selected a bucket yet. But if I have an active bucket, that's where I can change the name of it or add a description or any of those kinds of things. And then the rest of that long list are your buckets. So the buckets that belong to the users, user and the actions for managing buckets itself are kind of kind of sharing one uh, drop down there. So here I'm creating a new bucket. This is so fake. Um, but I highly, this is part of, the, part of the do as I say, not as I do thing. I've given this bucket a, an excellent name. It's the picture book project, uh, summer 2023. And I actually gave it a description saying it's that we're identifying and adding stickers and suffixes for, you know, these specific groups of, of picture books. People 
people tend to like you, you call it like my project. And then eventually you have like, I have a lot of projects, you know, and you, you know, so it, it's really worth either giving it a good name from the start or well, you still remember going back and editing the, uh, the name. And I can't tell you, recommend more highly to edit the description because even if you call it the summer reading, or, you know, whatever, you're not going to remember exactly what you were changing or doing or, or whatever. Again, total hypocrite here, but, but uh, do better than me. Now, opening a shared bucket is a weird concept to wrap your, you, you know, we all use various kinds of sharing software. And so our expectations of how sharing works kind of make us think you're sharing with a particular person or a particular reason and those kinds of things. Um, actually, to share a bucket, you're looking at the bucket number. So the bucket number for the children's relocation project is bucket number 2752. And the method of sharing that is to say, uh, Jennifer, <laughs> uh, that bucket that I asked you to look at is 2752. So I have not given you any explicit permissions. If somebody else is trying, if, if you uh, make a typo and reverse two of those digits, you're going to be randomly looking at some completely other bucket. Uh, um, so it's a, it's it works, but it but it doesn't. It's not uh, really the way we would want it to. And I guess this is a good point to mention that the ECDI, the Evergreen Community Development Initiative is undertaking a project to move uh, buckets in, to angularize the, the uh, bucket interface. And that's our first goal is to get, the, get everything angular because that's, that's the first step in any sort of make it work differently. Um, and we're particularly interested in, in building on that to do a more formalized way of sharing things explicitly and so on. I'm not supposed to actually talk much about this, so I'm going to stop. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, um, you know. So it, but we we really buckets are so incredibly useful, but there is a clunkiness factor to them. And once we get them into Angular and do do some other things, they can be. Um, so much better. But at the moment, it's it's almost, uh, you know, what we used to call sneaker mail. It's like, a, yes, I'll, I'm sharing this by handing you a piece of paper that says, this is my bucket number. Oh, and to open the shared bucket, you're just typing the, the number in. Um, adding items to, in, I, did I say this? Adding items to, to an item bucket, and there are two oh, um, tabs, pending items and, and the bucket view. And from pending items, you do have that, that ability to, to scan things. I'm only gonna say like a little bit else about pending. The whole concept of pending is to give you a way to move things around from bucket to bucket. It is clunky. And it is hard to explain, which is I'm not gonna, why I'm not going to explain it in any detail. But if I have a file, a, a bucket, that is Books for National Jazz Appreciation Month, and it has children's things and adult things and biographies and all of that, and I decide I want those children's things in the bucket of their own, one way to do that is to open the bucket, select the children's things, use the action, because there are lots of actions, to move those to pending, and then uh, open a new bucket, call it children's jazz things, go back to pending and say, you know, and send them over to that bucket. So you need to kind of like figure out like which, which who's, I always think of it as sort of like moving the cups around, you know, kind of thing. But it is the way that you can split something into two buckets, uh, the way you can um, merge two buckets into a single bucket or, or those kinds of things. And this is what I just said. Uh, people sometimes forget, this is like a, such a simple thing, but 
You can also add items to buckets on the fly uh, from the view item link. So you put together a great thing of your jazz appreciation books and all of that, and like new ones will come out and you'll discover or think of other ones. Um, so you can always, um, from the view item um, uh, link in the, in the uh, holdings uh, area, um, it is an action to do that, to go add individual ones. And if, if you're doing a project where none of this has to do with scanning barcodes and none of this has to do with using search, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, but it's really, it's like staff picks and it's like, go, you know, add these, you know, 15 completely unrelated, um, uh, you know, items to this bucket for some reason, you might as well just look them up, go to the view item link and, and add them individually that way. Um, when you've got your items in, a, in an item bucket, you, do, you can uh, do all those same things. You can select some of them, you can select all of them, you can use sort and all of that. But here's your menu of, of uh, actions. And you may not be able to read it, but you will notice it is shorter than the item status one. So it's just some of the greatest hits, um, but it doesn't matter because one of the options is open an item status. So you, you might as well just do, you know, like that's, that's all I ever do is like, I, I create the bucket and item status, send it to a bucket. When I wanna do something, I send it back over to item status where I will have a world of possibilities um, to use. Now we get to baskets. So baskets are temporary groups of bibliographic records, and they have a role. There are baskets that are in the public catalog and baskets that are in the staff catalog. And in either of those catalogs, um, baskets can be used to um, place a, a single hole, place holes on a batch of, of uh, selected things. Um, in the staff catalog, Baskets can be used to select titles and move them into a bucket. Um, and records stay in baskets until they're cleared or the evergreen session ends. You really need to be careful um, to make sure that you, in, in the staff client, to know that what's in your basket at the moment and not be talking to one patron and selecting some things and then they leave and you're you're placing, a, you're, you're placing a hold for some, you know, you just really need to keep an eye on what's actually um, in the basket at, at any given time. So I'm looking at search results screen in the Angular catalog. I'm looking at things for polar bears because I was looking at things to put in a, um, to put in a, a carousel. I'm scanning through this list and I'm selecting things based partly on the attractiveness of the cover image. If you're doing carousel, that is an important thing. And if you have 300 books on polar bears, maybe that may be excessive, but if you have a lot of books on polar bears, a ton of them are gonna have like almost an identical cover and you wanna like vary it and stuff. So, um, and the reason that's, the reason I'm talking about that is my um, bucket symbol, is that little blue, probably invisible from where you are, dot in the upper right. It's a basket icon, and it's got a little, little number next to it, three in this case. Um, it's telling you that there are things in that bucket, basket, excuse me, um, and how many there are. And you're not explicitly putting them into that basket. Every time you check something, it goes into your basket. And if you uncheck it, which is what I was doing with my polar bears. It's like, oh, I found a better cover than this one. You know, so as you're checking and unchecking things, the number of, of uh, bib records that are in that basket goes up and down. <laughs> this is how with a, in a staff mode, you can plat, uh, plat, <coughs> excuse me, place um, a batch hold on a, on a group of items. And we'll see that same thing again uh, for patrons. So 
record buckets are the permanent version of a basket. So baskets are like live in the moment and, and all of that. Um, but if you want to save those, so you have chosen which you know polar bear books that you want for whatever reason you were looking at them, um, then you want to put those into a, into a bucket. It's a persistent container for bibliographic records. And it'll stay um, on the system associated with your account forever, unless you have policies that say otherwise. Um, and uh, I'll, we'll show you some of the things that uh, record buckets are useful for. Uh, this is, oh, I know what I'm doing here. This, this is me selecting titles in the Angular staff catalog. I've done a more complicated search here because I, um, I'm using advanced search because this library wants to find only things with whatever that says, <laughs> um, oh, ocean, um, uh, within those two copy locations, they're adult nonfiction locations. And here are the basket actions that you can do. Uh, so one of them, uh, and this is a, a wonderful feature, is add all search results. So if, if it's like, no, I'm, I really, there are 187 of them. I know what I'm doing. I want all of them. I really don't want to page through them and click things or whatever. I'm doing some kind of collection management thing or whatever. I, I really want them all. Um, then that will do that. Um, the others are view basket, place hold, which we kind of saw. Um, add basket to bucket. Um, that's the really handy way of starting with the things in a basket and then transferring them to a bucket because you want to keep them on the system and you want to do things on them or you're going to continue seeking polar bear books or whatever. Uh, um, and uh, that works for that. This is a really significant um, uh, plus in the... Um, in the Angular staff catalog. You know, we saw with items, we had, you know, add to one of your existing record buckets or add to a new bucket. But this gives you the ability to add to an existing bucket, a new bucket, or, or a shared bucket. And what that's meant for my libraries is that, <laughs> that they can have a couple of people looking around for books that are, you know, on a particular theme or whatever. I see nodding heads over here, yes. Um, and, you know, they, have, they, have, they still have to know the bucket number, um, but they don't have, they, they have an easy way to, from the catalog, send it to a bucket that is not associated with their initials. And um, we like that quite a lot. And here are the ways to go directly to record buckets. Uh, there's a, an extra tab in, in the record buckets that doesn't exist in, in any way in the item buckets. And it's a search tab, record query tab. And that can be interesting. So you can, you can submit a record query there. Um, you can use the standard Boolean, um, Evergreen uh, Boolean operators, ampersand, ampersand for and, and pipe, pipe for or. You can use parentheses. You can do any of those kinds of things um, and uh, create a search, search the whole database or add a site or there are other limiters that you can add and, uh, and get everything. One of the things, oh, you, there is a limit, a size limit on that. We, we bump ours up every release. Um, but that may, that may be a problem. Uh, one of the things we do is sometimes we do projects that are across the whole network. And so we want to, you know, we want to, uh, you know, get, get lists of everything we have in a, in a certain area. Um, we do that often for sensitive things or areas where you would want more recent material. Autism is in there for, for that reason. Do you really want those books on autism from the, the 1970s and, and 80s? An academic library, possibly, but the public 
library? Probably not. Um, so being able to just shoot a key keyword across the whole database and, and uh, get results back is, is uh, helpful. But to be honest, we do much less of that since we got the ability to do a search, limiting it to your collection and save them all uh, that way. And just, and just like you can uh, um, uh, add a, an item directly to a, an item bucket, you can add a um, bib record directly to a, um, a uh, record bucket, and that's under other actions. Kind of wish it were a button of its own. Uh, but, you know, I'm looking at this record, it fits whatever I'm doing with that bucket, and I've got the option to um, add it to the, the bucket. Um, you've got actions for selected records here. You have fewer actions here than, than for items, but you can, um, you can export the MARC records, which is sometimes useful, and uh, there, are, there are other things that you can do. There's one thing that you actually kind of have to do here. And this is the way to merge records. So if you have duplicate records, of course we don't, but if you <laughs> but if you have duplicate records, you know, two matching records, three, sometimes four, um, you you put them in a in a in a bucket, and then you go open the bucket and merge them. Uh, I think most of our staff have a a permanent bucket called merge, you know, it starts with like an asterisk or something so that it's like always sorted to the top. Um, this screen, not particularly attractive from where you are, but this is like a really good screen. It lets you compare the two or three matching records, see the length of the record to choose the, the length and other uh, issues, to choose the record you want. You, so you're designated the, designating the lead record. You can actually edit the record you know, from here and then do your, your merge. So it's a really, if you're into merging bibliographic records, it's a great screen. Um, bas baskets for patrons. So I'm in the uh, patron catalog, the public catalog. Uh, I'm a patron who's interested in Greenland, apparently. Um, at the top of the screen, next to the basket actions, there's that little basket icon and, and it's indicating that there are 10 things there. Um, one of the options for the basket actions for patrons is to place um, a batch hold. Patrons love this because they don't have to answer the yes, so you want to pick it up, you know, all that. Um, in this case, one of these holds is going to fail because it's an ebook, um, but the system will give you one set of results telling you, like, this is what was successfully placed and this is what wasn't. It's a great thing to show patrons because the, the, the power user patrons, they're not placing one hole. They're like planning the next, you know, the next trip to the library. Um, my lists. I shouldn't say pronouns. Um, and that may be because 
you are so impressed with Matt Bird's bird books that you're going to do a display or you want to do some other project or he's going to donate them all to you or or whatever. But it that is a way to get back and forth between um, a publicly created thing. And, and oh, this is what it looks like when it's opened up as a record bucket. And staff can do this as well. We have library staff and sometimes volunteers who are <coughs> using, I'm just getting choked up about my pictures, using this as a way to uh, uh, create a, a shareable list. <laughs> and I hope I'm already almost done. I am. The one, sorry, I need a drink. <laughs> the, when you, when you go to the bucket interface, one of the options is to create a carousel. That's a great option, really works well. The confusing part though, so this is my bucket. My bucket is called Nordic Noir. Thank, thank you. But the real cure maybe to stop talking. So, <laughs> um, so the bucket is called Nordic Noir. When I chose to create a carousel from that, I gave the carousel the name Dark Tales from the Land of the Midnight Sun. Yeah, I was pretty proud of that. Um, <laughs> the carousel makes a copy of that bucket. So it's not that bucket. It is, it is a different copy of that. And that's good in some ways and bad in some ways, depending, but it's fine as long as you're aware of that. So when I go to look at the carousel con configuration, I can see it says system created bucket for carousel 303 copied from 519 blah, blah, blah. And it's got my fancy title and all of that. So if I go back to the original bucket, I can add titles and remove titles, but I'm not doing a thing for the carousel because it's already off there with the, with the copy that it made. And this is the summary, which says items, batches, buckets, batches, buckets, the end. <laughs> and any questions that you would like to ask each other? <laughs> yeah. I'm done. Yeah, well, it, <laughs> I know I asked you to give me the signal, but apparently I had a signal already set up. Yes. With those, and they have a, um, like a lot in these features.